Hello and welcome, uh, probably welcome back. So this is like uh, part two of probably a two part video on the solar model with uh, technology, specifically labor augmenting technology and population growth added in. So this is kind of like, uh, you know, the grand nitty gritty details of the solution to that to that particular model. The thing that usually professors and, and fellow TAs try to avoid doing because it's like the dirty details. So that would be nice to have that resource out there. Um, the previous one, you know, lasted about 20 minutes, the previous video, and uh, we got, we ended up at this point. So our K hat um, uh, is equal to the capital level per effective worker, right? So uh, per effective worker. So like this is output per effective worker. So you get output divided by the number of perfect, the number of effective workers, which is an effective worker is the labor supply times this technology that makes people more effective, makes individuals more productive. Uh, so our steady state level of capital per effective worker um, is equal to S divided by, so the savings rate divided by depreciation plus the growth rate of technology plus the growth rate of population all raised to this thing that's kind of defined by that copy of production function. So this is our steady state level that we worked with. We had to do a steady state level per effective worker because when we just did it uh, per worker, you know, like output per capita or capital per capita, uh, we found that it wasn't a steady state level at all. It was something that grew. So uh, that's why we focused here. And now let's kind of go through and solve the rest of the model. So up next is going to be output per effective worker. So that's y hat. Uh, we're going to try to find the city state level. So, you know, notationally we indicate our city state levels with a little star above it. So um, the amount of output per effective worker is the total output divided by the number of effective workers. And then, you know, like uh, I'm kind of following the tradition that I had where this column over here is going to be discrete time, this column over here is continuous time, and I kind of follow the notation where typically discrete time has those little time subscripts like k sub t, and so k sub t plus 1 or k sub t minus 1, and then continuous time follows the notation that this output is a function of time, you know, what time it is. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's honestly a little sloppy on my behalf, but, you know, I was just trying to, like, kind of stay consistent. So uh, over here, uh, let's do continuous time. So where output per effective worker is equal to aggregate output divided by the number of effective workers, where the number of effective workers are that labor augmenting technology times just the number of workers. Well, we have an equation for output, right? That's this equation right here. This is our Cobb-Douglas production function that be, that's been kind of manipulated a bit to add in labor augmenting technology. Um, and the next step right here, well, we find that, uh, you know, A times L raised to the 1 minus alpha divided by A times L is just equal to 1 over A times L to the alpha. Uh, we've done this step numerous times before, so I'm not going to show you the total details. It's basically, you know, it's just exponent algebra, really. Um, but what we find is that output per effective worker can be reduced to, uh, it's just a function of capital per effective worker, right? That's what this step is showing. So our output of effective worker is a function of only capital per effective worker. In fact, it's capital per effective worker raised to the alpha. Um, the only reason, the only way that worked is because we had that constant returns to scale production function. Um, that's why that was one of those big kind of assumptions that we had driving this model, that we have constant returns to scale production. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't really get this result, or you'd have to have something else in some other assumption. Um, but yeah, so what we find is that output per effective worker is just a function of capital per effective worker. And hey, where do we start with this? Well, we had a solution. We had a steady state level. Um, so what that means is we could just plug in the value that we had found for the steady state level of capital per effective worker. This is what we found for capital per effective worker. Um, and since output per effective worker is just capital per effective worker raised to the alpha, that means our steady state level of output per effective worker is plug in capital, the steady state level of capital per effective worker into that function and you get the following. Uh, in fact, the only difference is the exponent is slightly different. So output per effective worker is a steady state, and it's a steady state that's a function of the same things as capital per effective worker. So uh, our steady state level of output per effective worker, which is kind of our, our stand-in for utility, right? I guess consumption's a little bit more of our stand-in for like how happy people are in this economy, but 
this kind of thing that's fundamentally driving how happy people are is this output per effective worker. And we see that it's a function of the savings rate, it's a function of depreciation, it's a function of the growth rate of the population. Sorry, this is actually G's growth rate of technology and um, a growth, the growth rate of the labor supply. So if we tweak these things a little bit, which we'll do in the examples that I'll go over, um, we'll change the steady state level of output per effective worker. Uh, and then over here, I just kind of went through some more steps in discrete time, and it's really just a change in notation. So, okay. So, what next about this model? Well, we found the steady state level of capital per effective worker and output per effective worker. Um, but what are the other things we like to solve for? Well, the other things we like to solve for are uh, per worker capital. We also like to solve for output per capita. Uh, and then we're also curious, well, what does capital look like? How does aggregate cap the aggregate capital stock change through time? And then also, what is the aggregate output? How does aggregate output change through time um, in the steady state? So we have a steady state, uh, but so what are the steady state levels of those other important variables? So that's what I'm going to solve through one by one now. Well, the first one we've already done in the previous video, uh, we found that the our level of capital per worker is actually some, some function of time, right? So when we solve for lowercase k, so that's uh, worker, that's capital per worker in the steady state, we find that um, it's equal to these things over here that kind of define the level times um, this labor augmenting technology. And the thing is the labor augmenting technology grows through time. So this is something that's going to be growing. So it's not actually a steady state level of per worker capital. Uh, it's something that evolves through time. Okay, so that's that's kind of the first thing. Uh, the, also, the fact that I the, these steps here are the steps you would solve if there were a steady state level of capital per worker, but there's not, right? It's something that evolves through time. So this little equation is actually just plain out wrong, right? It's it's linked to what um, steady state level. To, it's linked to what capital per worker would look like. Um, you know, all of these things are going to be affecting it, but um, the actual level of capital per worker is going to, it depends on what capital was initially. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's basically not this, but these things are related to it. So um, the point is that capital per worker is some process that is defined by the savings rate, the growth rate of a population, depreciation, but then also it grows with that technology that we added into it. Um, so let's get to what is this? What is um, output per worker in the steady state? Well, output per worker here is just aggregate output divided by the number of workers. We then have an equation for output per worker, right? That's our production function here. Uh, the, it's a basic Cobb Douglas, but we added in labor augmenting technology. So when we solve for this and simplify it a little bit, we find that output per worker is equal to that labor augmenting technology raised to that exponent times capital per worker raised to this exponent. So if there was a steady state level of output per worker, it would be described by the following. Uh, it would be that there's some level y star that if uh, we started off with output per worker equal to y star, then output per worker would be that level for all time. So if it didn't exist, that's what it would be. Um, and we found over here, I mean, basically the, the, the things that I'm doing over here mean nothing because uh, we see that it's a fun, we see that output per worker is a function of this thing, which grows through time, right? Output per worker is a function of this labor augmenting technology that grows at rate g. And then it's also a function of capital per worker, which we just found a second ago was something that evolves through time. So all the steps I'm about to do are kind of like no-nos, right? Because we know there's not a steady state. It's something that evolves through time as a function of stuff. But what we do find is that um, if the output per worker in the steady state uh, will be a function of our labor augmenting technology, so that's the, that's how it grows, um, times these things that kind of determine the level, the savings rate, population growth, and then depreciation. Um, so, wait, so that's it's important to look at this so that we know what growth rates um, affect the growth rate of output per worker. And it's also important to look at these things to know that uh, savings, population growth, and depreciation are all things that can kind of affect these levels, the level of output per worker.
Okay, so now let's switch over to the, the last two variables that we find important, which are going to be output, the capital Y, and capital, aggregate capital, the capital K. So let's start off here with capital. Um, what is the level of capital in the steady state? Well, first off, we're, there's going to be no steady state level of capital. Um, it's going to be something that evolves through time. But if there were a steady state level of capital, we would use our capital accumulation equation. You know, the change in capital is equal to the savings rate times the total output minus depreciation. Um, so if there was a steady state level of capital, that steady state level of capital K star would be some level that if we started off with that level of capital, um, then it would stay at that level of capital for all time. All right. So if there was, we would um, solve our capital accumulation equation and find that K star is equal to the savings rate times aggregate output divided by depreciation. So uh, we have an, an equation right for Y, right? Um, output is equal to this kind of augmented, this twisted uh, version of the Cobb-Douglas production function. Um, and plugging that in and solving through it, we find that this hypothetical steady state level of aggregate capital is equal to the savings rate divided by depreciation raised to this exponent times the stock of labor augmenting technology times the number of workers. So this isn't a steady state, right? Because these two terms here change through time. And in fact, we know the growth rate of this, and we know the growth rate of this, right? The growth rate of labor augmenting technology is G um, by you know the setup of our equation, by the setup of our model. And we know the growth rate of labor is grows at rate N. So we don't have a steady state, but we do know a little bit about it. So if we were to shift S or we were to shift delta, you know, we were to change the savings rate or change the depreciation rate, we would change um, the growth path of capital. Um, but it wouldn't change the growth rate, right? Because the growth rate of capital is defined by these two things. If we were to change the growth rate of these two things, we would change the growth rate of capital. And then lastly, what about aggregate output Y star? Um, well, remember, y star is just what well, we found that y star is just a function of um, the current capital stock times the stuff, you know, labor augmenting technology times the quantity of labor. We found some equation that describes um, the capital stock in steady state, this guy right here. So if you kind of simplify things, I'm, by the way, I'm, this is a big no no, like this isn't exactly um, the actual solution, um, but it does give you some information as to what changes aggregate output. Uh, so if you go through that process, you'll find that aggregate output is some function of the savings level time divided by depreciation um, raised to this exponent times the uh, you know technology, which is labor augmented technology, times the quantity of labor. These two things grow through time by growth rates that we, we know. And then these things right here are parameters that are taken as exogenous. So we know that um, aggregate output is going to be determined by the growth rate of technology and labor. And uh, we also know that's going to be somehow influenced by the savings rate dep and depreciation. Cool. So what did we find overall? Before we get to the solo diagram and solo growth rates and other stuff and applications, let's just kind of recap everything we found. Uh, we found the following. So when we look at capital per effective worker and output per effective worker, we actually found that there were steady state levels. The steady state level of capital per effective worker is this guy right here, and the, um, the steady state level of output per effective worker is this amount right here. We found that capital per worker, you know, our K star, is actually a function of time, right? Uh, we find that it's, it's going to grow with labor augmenting technology, but it's also affected by the savings rate, the growth rate of population, and depreciation. And then we found the exact same thing for output, right? Because output per worker is just a function of capital per worker. So output per worker is going to be growing with the growth rate of technology, but it's also a function somehow influenced by the savings rate, the growth rate of population, and depreciation. And then lastly, we found with capital and output, capital and output are growing with technology in the labor supply, um, which makes really good intuitive sense, right? But uh, and it's also influenced by the savings rate and then the depreciation rate. So to see how all of these these things tie together, let's switch over to um, the uh, growth rates and to the solo diagram, which I'll cover in the next video.
um, next couple of videos. Check out the video description for links to it. Also, if you found this helpful, hopefully you did. You know, the focus was the nitty gritty, so hopefully that's what you're looking for. Um, yeah, if you found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and um, thanks, and have a good day. Bye.